Hi. Um, okay, this is sort of Paul is quite nicely speaking of fucking or killing. Me. Um, I have a, a good practice. You know, I'm here and I'm realizing I want to turn it off. It's yeah. really well rounded. It's integral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got good craft that I'm good at. I enjoy. I'm, I'm starting to learn how to uh, expand my service to, uh, out to the world. Yeah. Um, and I still want to have a boyfriend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, oh my god, if you can't even do it, like, I, I don't have a boyfriend now. <laughs> so, I know that people are talking about world things, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, in, you know, on behalf of people back home who want to know, um, what do you think is the, the purpose of relationships, or does one just become too evolved for it, as my friend Amen says? <laughs> oh, and your friend Amen? Oh my god! Well, yeah, I'll say. Okay, but what? what? Yeah. <laughs> too evolved for relationships? Well, that's his excuse. Yeah, have you looked in his, have you looked in his freezer? Because there could be a cut up body <laughs> Relationships go all the, all the way up. Okay. I, I think I think when when uh, I mean you know even the, even the uh, early Chinese notion of yin and yang. I mean when when the mystery manifests, the doubt manifests yin and yang first, and off of yin and yang everything else is hung. And so I personally believe that <laughs> because the we, again if, if we take it's just you know, it's just a parlor game to say if you were God or goddess and you. Finally, got tired of being that for, for gazillions of years, and you threw yourself out. You have to forget who you are to do that, right? You understand that part of the game? You ever try? I, I used to before. Maybe if you've heard, forgive me. But you ever tried to play when you were a child or a kid? Try to play like checkers with yourself or something yeah. like. That? It doesn't work, does it? Because you know what you're going to do next. So the only way you can actually play a game is that you know you say, okay, I'm going to move here, and then you walk around the table. You, 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 but it, and you have to forget who you are in order to make that game work. And so if you really forget who you are and get the game going, here you are. Okay. And so under those circumstances, because on the manifest side of the street, in the finite, those little objects that are running around, they tend to manifest in polarities. And, and boy-girl is pretty fundamental. And I don't, I, it, it's not a matter of your self transcending masculine and feminine. That goes on to say, the primordial self is without any duality. But without any duality doesn't mean it doesn't touch it. It means it embraces both with passion. So if you are in the position, in my, in my opinion, if you're in the position where you don't need relationships, you, I, I think you're really just a little bit too much ascending. And he said, you're going to get into that, and then what? But it's also on the way up, you have to do a lot of violence to the stuff, um, to your own body. And your body is a manifestation of your own desire to communicate. And you have, as you know, we, we exercise all three bodies. You have at least a gross, subtle, and causal body. And you can talk with gross, subtle, and causal. You can lift weights with gross, subtle, and causal. You can make love with gross, subtle, and causal. You can sing with gross, gross subtle, and causal. And if you're really good in whatever you're doing, whether it's writing, dancing, microbiology, you're basically engaging all three of those bodies in each act. And they have a real texture to them. And they also have penises and vaginas. And did you know you know what that yeah, I <laughs> Just I know I found that out in class last week. Shocking. <sighs> and that never changes, does I'm serious now. That never ever changes. And under under the conditions of just manifestation, since it is into this masculine and feminine, it just, there is no way that as masculine you are also feminine. And there's no way that as feminine you are also masculine. And so, so you have to inhabit masculine as masculine. There has to be, when you're on, on, certainly on an integral path, there has to be some way that you allow yourself, I'm talking about a man for a moment, to be more and more masculine. And there's a way that you have to allow yourself to be more and more feminine. 
and uh, people on him, I'm, I'm a great fan of David Data's work. I think he's done wonderful work with this. But the general principles are, are, are straightforward, and that is that whatever the masculine impulse in you, however you feel it, and however you feel the feminine impulse, and I won't try to define that right now. Each of you kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of do that. At the very least, there are these three unfolding stages we talked about. You can be feminine egocentrically. You can be feminine ethnocentrically. And you can be feminine world-centrically. And those of you who actually study what Carol Gilligan said, she did not say that women don't have hierarchy. She said women go through three stages of hierarchy. And the first stage is selfish. The second stage is care. And the third is universal care. So it's the same impulse. The same impulse is to take care of, to nourish, to hold on to and to basically embrace. And the feminine, whatever the feminine embraces, it says, you are okay. And that is extremely important. It's an unconditional loving that is the feminine. Now, I don't want to exclude other, you know, other aspects of feminine. You can bring, bring your own to it. I'll just give one example. And so that, that, that principle of unconditional love starts by un, sort of, I love myself unconditionally. And that's, that's it, but in an egocentric kind of way. And then it expands to notice, wait a minute, there are others that need care. And it's usually then extended to a, maybe family, maybe tribe, maybe nation. But somebody kind of runs up against its own boundaries. But within those boundaries, the feminine can be very loving. Not, and I use this as an extreme example, Nazis loved their families. I mean, seriously now, they were gen within that boundary, genuinely love it. But then with all, you keep moving, and that impulse of the feminine to embrace it and fold is yes, all human beings. And then if you really breathe into it, all sentient beings. And there's uh, other sides of the feminine can be beauty. And if, and in, 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 in whatever form you, you take that. And if you radiate beauty for yourself, it's okay to start, you'll center it. But then you can radiate beauty for your, the relationship you're in. And the great, great pleasure that radiating beauty and care can give. And to see a beautiful, to be in the presence of beauty. And again, it doesn't have to be physical beauty. What's beauty is what's attractive. And every woman knows how to be attractive in her own way. And so you can expand that attractiveness into a circle of relationship. And you give great, great pleasure when you, when you do that. And then you can extend beauty to the entire universe. And you can embrace the entire universe in the radiant beauty that you are. And so there's, yeah, that's <laughs> kicking. So, and, and, men, and men can have whatever they feel is, is masculine. And, 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 and you know, it, it's, it's pretty hard to get, get around certain kind of sexual connotations of masculine because it is kind of a penetrating, pushing, uh, aggressive it can be, it's analytic, it can be clarity. But again, there are, three, there are three levels of that. And one is that there is an aggression for yourself, that you are just going to protect yourself. But the typical masculine principle, where the, where the feminine embraces, the masculine pushes against boundaries. And, and, and men know that when they get angry, they are trying to break through a boundary. A, some, a barrier, and that actually can get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a force of caution and breaking down all boundaries until, as a masculine impulse, you go from just wanting to push for myself, to wanting to push for my family, to wanting to push for all humans, to wanting to penetrate the universe with my love and gift. And it can be, and it's okay for men to step into that pushing. This is okay for women to step into that embrace. It's just a matter of how high are you pushing or how high are you embracing. And so under those circumstances, you have these two sides of a dance. And they're never going to be the same. They just are never going to be the same. Now, of course, each of us could find the feminine and the, and the masculine and stuff. Really, we, we, it's a cliche. It's true, but we all understand that. Right now, we're kind of isolating the particular components to it. But 
by its nature, they, they, they can never be the same. And therefore, that dance requires, a, I'm going to say a man and a woman, if it could be that, requires a man and a woman all the way up. And of course, at that top, both the ultimate pushing and wish to bring clarity and drive, and the ultimate embrace can come together in one taste. But that's on the other side of manifestation. <laughs>